So I've been delving into more Avermedia hardware as of lately, and I've been impressed in some ways, but also pretty disappointed in others. I want to take a look at the Avermedia Nexus if I can at some point, but for now, I kind of just wanted to test out the microphone that they launched alongside with it. So with that said, introducing the Avermedia live streamer mic 330. Get ready for a doozy, so let's just dive right in. Before we continue, don't forget that I have a Twitch channel that you can go ahead and follow me on for live microphone reviews and much more than that. But you're also going to find my Instagram and a link to the text on the Discord in the description. So come join the community because it is a pretty cool one. We've also opened up a Patreon as of late where if you join, you'll be automatically entered to win one tech gadget every month in our exclusive giveaways. Details to that are going to be down below. Don't forget to check out the description for everything. Now let's get right into the video. So for proper disclaimers, I just wanted to let all of you guys know that I'm going to be recording this entire review with this microphone so you can hear what it sounds like for content creation. I'm also going to be streaming with it tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time as in like the same day that this review comes out. So go ahead and check out my Twitch. Links to that are going to be down below. That way you can also ask all of your questions live. So yeah, I'd love to have you over there. To begin with an unboxing, it comes in this plastic bag and beyond that, there's the actual box which looks pretty nice. I removed the seal in order to open up the box and pull out the foam protector for it. Lifting that up, you're going to find the microphone itself, a silver ring for replacing the red one if you want to, an adapter, and an XLR cable with instructions. So, pretty nice so far. Exterior design is actually really nice here. I actually really like what they did with the design here. So you got a heavy duty matte black metal design that just feels great. It's got a ton of heft and I personally think that this microphone looks really cool. It's also got an on and off switch for turning this microphone on and off, which can also be used for like muting and unmuting yourself if you really want to. You know, like obviously it can be used for those purposes and there is going to be the shock mounts over here that's also made of metal and the mounting system is actually pretty similar to the Shure SM7B. You just screw it onto whatever arm or stand you're using and it's super convenient. You also get one of the coolest features that I have seen so far since I haven't actually come across anything like this from any other manufacturer ever and I would love to see more of this being implemented. But essentially, this little spot down here on this microphone, like the swivel itself, makes it so the swivel itself is actually completely independent from the mounting system itself. And I can adjust it without much hassle whatsoever. I love a lot of the quality of life improvements on this product, and I really dig it. I think this microphone is beautifully designed, and a lot of effort clearly went into making this microphone. Besides all that, there's only going to be one XLR port on the bottom or on the back, and that's really about it. And in terms of specs, this is a cardioid dynamic microphone with a frequency response of 50 hertz to 18 kilohertz, and it is going to be addressed from the very top just like this. But most importantly, let's get right onto the sound test. I'm going to be doing this portion without any kind of background music so that you can hear what this microphone sounds like on its own. I am in a fairly sound treated room, as you can see there is there are going to be a lot of foam panels, but my windows which are behind the microphone, sort of to the side, but like behind it, aren't really fully padded, so you might still hear things coming from outside. Also, it's worth noting that I'm using the Yamaha MG10XU audio interface for this recording. And so far, I really don't like the sound of this microphone. It sounds compressed in a sense, and it still isn't really the best microphone when it comes to sound rejection either. You might hear other things as well coming from maybe the side or behind, even the mini fridge that could be all the way on the back over there. And taking a look at the frequency graph and how they've EQ'd this microphone, by default, it's a little bit weird, but I think that I can pinpoint why this microphone sounds the way that it does by just looking at the graph. So essentially, this microphone has barely any low end, if at all. The mids are slightly boosted in some aspects, especially around the 400 hertz range, and then it takes a dip again later on. To take a massive boost in the high end at roughly 5 kilohertz, and then taking a huge dive from there. This is a poorly tuned microphone in my opinion, 
as it is, and the more limited frequency range that this microphone offers does not exactly help in making this easier to customize either. This microphone also has a higher than usual noise floor, which makes it more susceptible to white noise whenever you're using it or raising the gain on your on your interface to try and get more volume out of this. And it really can just emphasize that more, and I really don't like that. So this is what this microphone is going to sound from very up close. This is going to be for the proximity effect. Now this is what this microphone is going to sound like from about, I want to say, 6 inches, no, about 10 inches away. Yes, 10 inches away. And this is kind of what you can expect if you want to speak into it from this system. And now this is going to be the keyboard test. So currently I am using a mechanical keyboard over here. The mechanical keyboard is directly under slash uh, behind this microphone. So this is what you can expect. Let's say that you're speaking directly into this microphone and typing at the same time. Then this is pretty much the kind of sound that you can expect. Or when it comes to sound rejection, this is pretty much what you would get out of it. And so I realized a little bit earlier actually that I have been recording this entire re review with the EQ settings that I intended on applying on this already there. And I guess that that explains why this sounded a little bit better to me. However, right now this is going to be the actual natural sound to it. You already heard the e EQ already in, in the uh in the initial part of the sound test, but this is what this microphone is going to sound like by default. So I do apologize for that sincerely. However, this is this is the reason why I was saying that this microphone sounds so bad, in my opinion. So what, what I ended up doing earlier in order to try and fix the audio on this microphone was actually to lower the highs by quite a bit, uh, lower the mids a little bit as well, because I wanted to try and flatten that curb. And I also went ahead and do, and increased the lows by quite a bit because I wanted, again, like to be able to flatten that curve and try to get a more balanced sound out of it. I didn't feel like I got a more balanced sound out of it. It, it just kind of, it kind of did sound a little bit more boomy, but it did sound clearer as well to me than what it does with its normal configuration. So again, this is what the microphone sounds like without any kind of EQ applied. And now I'm going to be doing the rest of this review with this setting so that you can get a better idea since I was supposed to do that earlier. So again, I do apologize for that. Now let's get into my complaints. This microphone sounds pretty bad out of the box, and I don't say that about a lot of microphones. I was generally surprised when I listened to this, and I thought that I did something wrong. Maybe I didn't plug in the XLR cable all the way in, or maybe this interface that I'm using is just too noisy for it, but even then, this microphone just sounds eh. And I don't think that the initial profile will sound very good for most people. However, with a lot of EQ, and I did have to do quite a bit of EQing here, you can make this microphone sound better, but you shouldn't really have to go through all that to get a good sound out of it. Also, plosives were somewhat of an issue here, but however, I would kind of just blame that more so on myself because this does have a thicker windscreen, so I think that I think that I was just being a little bit strong with my P's. So in conclusion, the hardware is really nice here, but I felt like this microphone needed extra time in the oven to really get good sound out of it by default. I know that they want you to purchase the Evermedia Nexus with it, and I intend on doing so for review purposes. Who knows? Maybe this microphone will sound better on that interface, but I don't have much hope for it. It's a fantastic piece of machinery that's held back by its real-life performance, and that's what really sucks about it. And you should not have to work this hard to EQ it, especially if you're just going to be using it for streaming or something like that. You should not have to fix the issues that Avermedia brought forth to you. I do not recommend this microphone since the Rode PodMic, the Movo VSM5, the Samsung QTU, the Moono AU300HD, all of these microphones, and many more, trump this one in terms of sound quality for less money or the same price. So. No, I cannot recommend this microphone whatsoever, and it sucks because I really wanted to like it, but it's just not good. But if you're still interested in this microphone, or at the very least you might be interested in some of the other options that I brought forth, then I'll be making sure to leave affiliate links down to Amazon for all of those microphones for you to go ahead and try out and 
pick the one that you like the most. There are going to be links down there to Abunda, which is going to be a fantastic financing service that's going to allow you to finance any of these microphones with no credit card required of your own. So, you know, links to that down below. And there's also going to be Luster, which is going to be a great browser extension for making it easier to find sales and thanks of the like, and also to show you like comparisons. And if you use any of my links, then I do get a small commission that does help out the channel quite a bit. So I would appreciate that quite a bit. And also I wanted to give a very special thanks to our tier three $10 patrons over here who have been incredibly helpful in making this channel be able to make more content like this. So I would specifically like to go ahead and thank Omar, Saad Alwazel, and Joe Moss. Thank you so much for all, all of your support. It really does go a very long way. And now on to the rest of the patrons, which are going to be the tier twos, $5 tiers. So yeah, here we go. And this is super important. I would just like to give a very special thanks to all of our patrons, which are going to be listed right here on the screen. Again, a massive thanks to you all for supporting us to help us create the kind of content that we bring to you on a day-to-day -day basis. And thank you so much for supporting at the Tech Summit podcast as well. And just remember that if you would like to be a part of this community too, and then do make sure to check out the links to our Patreon, where you don't only get bonus episodes of our podcast, but you also get automatically entered into one of our monthly giveaways of a tech product that we have reviewed and that is of at least $50 in value or higher. So I'll link to that down below. And don't forget to follow me on my social media and like my Instagram, my Twitch, and obviously Patreon if you would like to pledge over there. But you already know about that. So with that said, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching and I will be seeing you all later.